Before joining Amazon as a software engineer, I failed a lot of system design interviews. Today, we're going to go over what you need to know to dominate the system design interview. Because if you can't design an optimal distributed system from scratch in 30 minutes that took teams of engineers years to come up with, you should be unemployed and homeless. A question that I often see is, how do people grind leak code and now system design with a full-time job and other adult responsibilities? You're going to need a reserve of Jack Daniels and Adderall, commonly referred to as smart juice. This combo will help you level out your mental state to push yourself beyond any normal human brain's compute power. We'll start with some simple ideas and slowly evolve our design into a fully-fledged architecture. Let's go over the distributed cache problem, but we'll also be looking at some of the general steps that you should be going through in any system design interview. The system design interview is an open-ended conversation. You are expected to lead it. The problem they give you to solve will be intentionally ambiguous. The interviewer is going to want you to ask clarifying questions to extract the functional and non-functional requirements for the system. Clarify what the hell the system should actually do. What is the functionality expectation from the user's perspective? For our cache, the two requirements will be to put an item to the cache and also read items via a get call. For non-functional requirements, usually the interviewer will challenge you with scalability and high performance, since you'll need to make trade-offs to achieve both. We should also add availability as a requirement, since we need to ensure we do not lose any data during hardware failures, and that the cache is still accessible in case of network partitions. Let's assume we have a fully coded up LRU cache. Hosting the cache on one server gives us a single point of failure. Let's make it distributed by moving the cache to its own host server. Each host can store a chunk of data, also known as sharding. Since the data is split among several hosts, we can store much more data in memory. Now that we have multiple cache hosts, how do you know which server to send a user's request to? Let's say we have four cache hosts, and we want 25% of the requests to go to each host to balance the load equally. The first thing that may come to mind is to solve this with the modulus operator. When a request comes in, we calculate the hash of the input key and find the remainder by taking the modulus with the number of available hosts. The remainder value is the host number and we send the request to that host. But what happens when a new host is added or one of the existing hosts has a hardware failure? The main service will start choosing completely different hosts for the same input. This is unacceptable and should never be a technique actually used in production. Let's instead learn about a fancy but very easy to understand concept that's good to know for all system design interviews. Consistent hashing is based on mapping nodes and requests to a point on a circle. We go clockwise and assign values based on the host identifier. The hash tells us where on the consistent hashing circle the host lives. The reason we do this is so we can assign a range of values that each host will own. Specifically, each host will own all values up until the nearest clockwise neighbor. So when we need to look up which cache host stores a request key value, we take the hash and trace that value to the nearest host in the clockwise direction. What happens when we add a new host to the cluster? The hash is calculated for a new node, node 5, which is added to the ring like before. And if N5 is the node before a new request, N5 will be the one to serve that request. Okay, now we know about how the service knows which host to send a request to. But the service we currently have is still lacking high availability. What happens if one of the shards gets a much higher amount of traffic than other shards? This is known as the hot shard problem. Data replication is the answer. There are many techniques for data replication. Let's keep things simple and use leader follower. For each shard, we'll designate a leader server and several read replicas. Read replicas strive to be an exact copy of the leader. All put calls go through the leader node, while get calls go through the read replicas. Calls to the cache shards are spread among several nodes. It is much easier to deal with hot shards. 
we may scale out a shard by adding more read replicas. This is the general structure of a system design interview. You will walk the interviewer through your design and communicate with them to understand which parts you should deep dive on. I'll leave you with some final tips on system design interviews in general. The goal of the interviewer is to get a general sense of your system design knowledge. Most software engineers at the point when they start encountering system design interviews have most likely spent their time working on a pre-existing system, and only a few actually get a chance to design a system from scratch and learn the mistakes and trade-offs. This is why I think one of the best ways to prepare for system design interviews is to actually build a project from scratch. Building a simple distributed key value store, like the one we went over today, isn't that complicated. It's actually a fun project and you can put it on your resume after you're done. Kill two birds with one stone.